Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Rise. It is good to be here. All right, the cult of Razor from startup to global brand. Well, essentially what I'm going to do today is pretty much talk about Razor, what we've done in the past couple of years as a startup, and uh, how we've built pretty much the community around our brand, a community around the gamers, following our ethos for gamers by gamers. So quick show of hands, um, how many gamers are there in the room? Good. Well, not too many. I believe this number will rise in the next couple of years. Gaming essentially is growing both geographically. We are seeing a lot more gamers in various countries, and it's growing horizontally. Gamers are growing older. Gamers are growing younger every single day. So in short, who, are, who we are. For, the, for those who are non-gamers over here, you may not necessarily be familiar with the triple-headed snake logo. And uh, we were founded back in 2005. So we're a startup. We view ourselves as a, a bit of a larger startup today, a little long in the tooth, but pretty much doing what we can to deliver the best possible experience for pretty much gamers everywhere. Now, what do we do? We make gaming peripherals. We are the world's number one brand for gaming peripherals. And we don't, we don't just design, manufacture, ship gaming peripherals everywhere. We created this category. We were the first to coin the term gaming mouse. We moved on to gaming keyboards, so on and so forth. And since then, from 2005, we expanded our repertoire of products to gaming laptops or systems, pretty much the nexus of which products connect back. We've looked at everything from connected devices back in the, back in the day. We've shipped millions of products worldwide in North America, Europe, Asia, and of course, all of which connect back to a central software platform. We've got millions of users coming online every single day. So what, in, in short, I think it's a bit of a buzzword, like an IoT buzzword, but we started this back in about 2006, 2007, primarily to allow us to get the best amount of data to design the best product for everyone. Now, overarching all of this, the hardware, and the software is the brand. So without much further ado, I thought I'd let a video do the talking. Pretty much from where we started in 2005, and you'll see that the video is a little grainy in 2005 because we couldn't really afford a good camera back then. Um, and then it trends all the way for the next 10 years. So here we are. If this clicks through. <laughs> Last 10 years, we've been building our brand, we've been building our community together with the gamers out there. And we've kind of grown pretty much together with where all the gamers are found globally, from the US to Europe, and of course, to Asia, where it's pretty much the next frontier for us. And what we've done really is to ensure that we keep with our ethos of always designing great products 
for gamers, focus on cutting edge technology, making sure that gamers everywhere remain focused on what we want to deliver. So, curiously, and this slide kind of shows we're one of the two consumer technology brands in the world that people tattoo logos on themselves. So, in short, we're not going to change our logo anytime soon, right? So, of course, the other one's Apple. And, and what we want to do, really, is to always look at communicating with our, our user base. We don't necessarily do anything different, except for the fact that for the past 10 years, we've done no traditional advertising at all, which also means that if you're a non-gamer, you probably wouldn't be very familiar with us. But if you're a gamer, you would have seen us on eSports streams. We've been sponsoring eSports for the past 10 years before it became a buzzword. So today, I think for the past 12 months, eSports has suddenly become very sexy. But ourselves, we've been supporting eSports for a really, really long time. What else? Social media. We are on every single channel that we can talk to with the gamers all the time. We constantly keep ourselves chatting with the gamers out there and ensure that we always keep with our cent uh, central ethos of For Gamers by Gamers. And now we are officially a religion. You know, and so I got this um, from one of our fans who, pay, uh, who posted it on our Facebook page. He applied and made sure that, we had, that he got the cult of Razor as his official religion. So it is pretty crazy. But that's what we've done to essentially ensure that every single moment, gamers everywhere will see the triple-headed snake logo, understand what we're evangelizing, hear the word, and continue to preach it to the other non-gamers out there. So in short, we've built a pretty phenomenal community with Razer. How do we build it? And if you've got a startup, and I believe many of you guys here are founders of startups, how would you be able to build a community like ours for your company? Pretty much there are three things that I believe we've done, we continue to do, and we believe we will continue to do for years to come. First up, it sounds simple, but you truly have to be part of the community. That's the first precept that we follow. It's all about authenticity. Myself, I used to be a competitive gamer. Well, I say, I'd like to say I'm still a competitive gamer. I'm still pretty good. But you have to be part of the community. And ourselves, for gamers, by gamers, that's the mission for the company. It's essentially everything that guides Razer. Every decision that we make, everything that we do, we focus on being part of the community ourselves. So every single person at Razer is a gamer one way or the other. Be part of the community. So what have we done? Could I have the next slide, please? Today, we sponsor gaming tournaments everywhere. We support anything our community goes to. We do everything that our community believes in, and we do that. So from gaming tournaments many, many years ago, it's not about marketing ROI. If you hear about anything about ROI and stuff like that, or all the marketing words that you, you've believed or you've, you've learned, throw that out of the window. We don't do any of that. We don't look at sales numbers when we design products. We don't have any focus groups. We just do what we want to do for ourselves. So we've designed products that we've said, wow, is anyone going to buy this? And usually the answer is, we don't care. We, if we want it ourselves, that's good enough for us to launch it to everyone. We don't have any formal analysis. We don't have any formal ways of looking at, um, should we sponsor this? Should we do that? We just look at it and say, is it cool? And if it is, we'll just absolutely do that. So tournaments, events, that's what we do over and above. And just last week when I was in San Francisco, we announced our first Razer store in San Francisco. And our stores aren't necessarily traditional retail stores at the same time. Now remember, we've talked about being part of the community. What we wanted to do was to build a nexus, a phenomenal, a truly incredible place that we wanted to be at ourselves. We wanted to build a place where gamers could gather, 
meet in real life. And clearly, it wasn't just us who wanted to turn up at the store. We had thousands of gamers turn up. It was 50 degrees, well, 10 degrees Celsius. Out there at night, we had gamers camp out there for the opportunity to be one of the first to be in the Razer store. And for everybody who's in a Razer store, they can stay there all day long, they can play all day long. That's the kind of store I wanted to be at. Hang out there, have a good time, and no one's ever going to try to get them to, play, to, to buy anything. And that's what we've done. So not only do we do this online by sponsoring events or servers and stuff like that, we've even gone offline to build temples of which gamers can come and play. So this was San Francisco. It was pretty cool. We had a press article because purely by pure coincidence, and I assure you it was pure coincidence, Apple opened a flagship store over there on the very same day around the corner. And the press, some of the members of the press said, we completely, well, this PC gaming company completely upstaged the Apple flagship store. So it was pretty cool. I don't think Apple was too happy about that, though. So it, wasn't just, it isn't just San Francisco. We're really looking at being part of the community, building places, temples of which gamers can gather everywhere. So we've built it in Manila, Bangkok, Taipei. And the real question is, how do we figure out where to open the next store? It's very simple. What do we do? We ask our gamers, where would you like us to open the next store? So candidly, we opened the Taiwan one first, and we said, where would you guys like us to open the next one? I think our Pinoy Filipino fans decided to game the system, and a whole bunch of them swarmed in and said, we want it in Manila. And we said, OK, we'll open the next one in Manila. And that's what we do. We listen to a community all the time. It's all about being part of the community. So that's the first thing. Be part of the community. So the second thing is about communication. No longer can startups, no longer can brands, no longer can companies stay in the ivory tower anymore shouting out, this is the way you do things. Absolutely not. Today, we're always communicating. We're always talking to the gamers, to our community, and I would urge every single one of you to do the same for your community. And you've got the tools to do that, just as we have the tools to do that today. So what do we do? We've set up social media accounts. It's not just Instagram that we've set up. We've over a million followers on Instagram, or two million on Twitter. We've got over seven million on Facebook. And of course, when the social media channels start to try to throttle you a little bit and make you pay for advertising, and we're kind of cheap that way, so we're still a bit of a startup. We've set up our own channel to talk to our gamers, talk to our community, ourselves unfettered. We've got a forum called Razor Insider that allows us to chat constantly, all the time, with the gamers. Always communicate. And what about communication? And even myself, for that matter, I run my own social media channels because it allows me to say whatever shit I want to say, which is good. So I run my own social media channels. I don't have, we can't afford a social media manager for myself, unfortunately. So that's stuff that we do. So you know, if anyone, anything rude comes from this, it's usually me. But if someone gets in trouble, it's not me. If someone hacked my account, all right? So that's what we constantly do. We constantly communicate over and over again. And what do we communicate? So here's an anecdotal uh, kind of, um, thing that happened recently. So we, one of my, my um, community guys put up a video on YouTube. He was really happy. He was really proud of the work that he had done. And of course, gamers being gamers, somebody said, ooh, that was literally the most cringeworthy thing I've seen this year. I'm sure many of you who do your own community stuff would have done that. Now, typical companies, if you're not part of the community, would, number one, delete it. Number two, hide it. Number three, ignore it altogether. Our community guy decided to reply, you probably got used to your face in the mirror already. <sighs> 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 
This made it on the front page of Reddit, where a whole bunch of people said, holy shit, why, how can you do that? You're being rude to your customer. You don't do stuff like that to your customer. You don't do stuff like that to your customer, but you sure as hell do that to members of your own community. So he posted and he replied, hey, I'm the guy who got skewered on YouTube by you guys earlier. And I ended up on this front page thread. Lots of people are calling for the head of the social media manager who fired back at me. On the contrary, and this is all about understanding the community. It's not even about understanding the community. It is about being part of the community. On the contrary, that person deserves a raise. He didn't get a raise, by the way, just FYI. Their command, uh, their command was hilarious, genuinely refreshing to get a real response. Whoever you are, salty social media manager at Razor, I salute you. So that's how we communicate with our users. Well, we don't communicate all the time like that. But it's about understanding the user. We don't treat our customers as customers. They are not. We are part of the community. We expect to be treated like part of the community. And we will treat the community as part of the community. And that's what we do. So the first thing, to be part of the community. Secondly, always, always communicate. Finally, the third thing, never compromise. And that's important. Always do right by the community, because the community never forgets. So, and what do I mean? So this is a bit of an eye chart, but I'll pull up the relevant portions. A little earlier last year, we made a little bit of a mistake. We made a mistake. Some of the managers in, in my team, unfortunately, uploaded uh, a coupon code on our store that gave an automatic 90% discount on everything on our store. That was a bit of a disaster. So we decided to talk about it directly with our, com with our, with our community, that 90% of the Razor products at our UK Razor Zone store was not authorized or approved by us. There was a huge run on the, the store. And given how we were busy playing some computer game at that, spot, at that point of time, we only realized it when the store was empty, all right? We said we've always had a customer first policy. And what we did, what we decided to do at the sheer detriment of Razor was to honor all the orders that were placed. Did it hurt the company? Absolutely. Was it something that we decided was in line with our values? It's not a business for us. Razor is our passion. It's something that we do every single day. We live it for gamers, by gamers. We decided to honor the codes. And our focus was always to do the right thing by our community and by our fans. And that's one of the things I would urge every single one of you to remember always. Why? Because in the course of growing and scaling your business, you will be distracted by many people. You will have investors who will say, are you sure you're doing the right thing? You will have mentors who will tell you, dude, I've done this before. You should not do that. You will have your staff telling you, are you sure we should actually do something like that? It's going to hurt the company. We can't get the bonus this year so on and so forth. But these are the times of which will differentiate yourself as a startup that can build your community as opposed to any run-of-the-mill brand out there. These are the brands that will stand the test of time, that will allow you to say, I'm going to stand for my values, I'm not going to compromise, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. And that's what we did. And curiously, we just thought this was a truly simple gesture to our fans or the guys that took advantage of the 90% off discount code. And we were surprised to see after that the sheer amount of press that it generated. And this was something that we did not expect. Everyone covered it in the tech industry. It was Engadget, The Verge, CNET, IGN, all of which said in a simple terms, that we didn't compromise on our values. And like a startup like yours, I hope to be able to see that continue of never compromising ever. It's harder than it sounds, trust me.
So pretty much three things. The first of which is to be part of the community, ourselves, for gamers, by gamers. Always, always communicate. So feel free to drop a note on my Facebook page or tweet me. If you get something rude, as I've mentioned, it's usually myself. And finally, never compromise on your values, ever. So thank you very much. I hope I've been able to share a little bit of our story of being from a startup, the startup that we still are, to a global cult brand. And I look forward to seeing many of you build communities like this of your own. Thank you very much. Thank you.